Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange TV. In this episode, I want to bring you another two-gun match. This one isn't the one I run near Tucson. This is not 2G ACM. This is not Arizona two-gun that uh, Paul and some of my friends run. This is another two-gun event that's now sprung up. And it's interesting in that they've taken a strategy of integrating a two-gun match into a traditional three-gun match and providing it as a separate scoring division. This may very well be a excellent strategy in getting two guns spread to the masses in a way that we haven't been able to do so so far. Many people have come to me and asked, how do I get two gun in my area? And it's a challenge because a lot of clubs already are filled up with all sorts of other sporting events or other match matches such as three gun. But the reality is, is that with some clever stage design, you can actually integrate a two gun event into your already pre-existing three-gun event and just run it as a separate scoring division. The guys that run the multi-gun the, uh, the multi matches up at Rio Salado in Mesa, Arizona, they're also the same guys that run the Superstition Mountain Mystery three-gun event, which has been running since 1996, one of the longest and largest three-gun events in the country. Um, they are a epicenter and mecca of three gun in Arizona, actually in the whole southwestern US. And they've started trying something new in that they're now providing two gun as a division embedded within their traditional three gun monthly event. So you can go there and say, I want to shoot three gun or I want to shoot two gun. And then you say, I want to shoot limited tack optics or open or whatever. Same scoring applies, two hits anywhere on paper, all that kind of stuff that you would see at a traditional three gun event. But you can just abandon the shotgun. And by clever stage design, the shotgun replaces the pistol and vice versa. And you can have two events in one. Well, at this very first attempt of doing this, which was just a couple this last weekend, they had 92 shooters and just about half the participants opted to shoot two gun instead of three gun. So of that, there was still the half of the people that really wanted to shoot traditional three gun and they did. And then there were people that wanted to do shoot two gun instead of three gun, some of them new shooters. But more interestingly, a bunch of traditional three gun shooters opted to shoot two gun. And I asked a few of them why, and some of them just preferred it. It was less junk they had to carry on their body. But I heard from more than one of them, and I don't need to mention names, and I know that this does not represent everyone in the community, but I heard this from at least three pretty important three-gun shooters, that they felt that the shotgun had been corrupted to the point where it was so gamey that it really wasn't relevant anymore, but they were caught up in the gear race to be able to be and maintain competitive in three gun. So if you want to be a three gun shooter and you want to do well at three gun, they felt compelled to do all these things they had to do to their shotgun with their weird loading mechanisms and all the stuff that goes on with the shotgun to force themselves to do that so they could remain competitive. But by getting rid of the shotgun entirely, that part of three gun, which has really been the most corrupted part of three gun is gone. And now it becomes a more traditional marksmanship event. Now, obviously there's a gear race with the pistol and the rifle as well, but the three gun is really the emphasis and the epicenter of where things have gone a little awry in three gun from let's say the early soldier of fortune days. There's nothing wrong with that gaminess if that's what you're interested in. and certainly does compel us to push our technology and gear forward. But there was at least three of the really hardcore three gun shooters opted to shoot two gun just to avoid that problem entirely. So I find that to be a very interesting outlook. But more importantly, if there's a club near you that's running a three gun match currently, you could look at these stages that I'm presenting to you today, and maybe with a little tweaking, you could embed a two gun match into your three gun event. So at this match, let's talk about the gear I'm shooting because it's also about our stuff. I shot our what would Stoner do 14.5 inch quote unquote door kicker carbine with the hollow sun red dot. Obviously the laser and white light have nothing to do with the match event, but I keep it in a practical fashion um, and uh, did very well with this. And there's more to come about our what would Stoner do rifles. But when you watch in the stages, this thing is absolutely going down the right path and kicking butt. And then for the pistol, that's by the way, TAC Limited. TAC Limited is red dot or iron sights only. And for the pistol, I shot my Beretta 92A1 with G model conversion. G model conversion, we are unloaded. G model conversion merely decocks the hammer. It does not work as a safety. And that avoids the problem that the Beretta 92 series has with the safety being accidentally engaged. It's merely a decocker. So let's move on to the four stages and let's have some conclusions at the end. So this stage is the long range stage. Almost all traditional three gun matches have at least one stage which is oriented around long range. Well, this is more like mid range. The targets are at 100, 150, and 200 yards. Since there's no shotgun or pistol on this stage, this stage is identical whether you're shooting two gun or three gun at the event. Starting at the low ready, at buzzer, you move to the prop, you engage all 11 targets. Once you've hit all of them, you move to the car and repeat the engagement on 11 targets. So a minimum of 22 hits. Our what would Stoner do 14.5 inch quote unquote door kicker carbine did really well at this particular stage, even though it's the mid range stage, using only an unmagnified red dot. Now, one of the things that this stage had going for it for me with the carbine was the targets were very easily 
visible and well presented, so there was no problem identifying them at range. That's something the red dot is uh, a problem with. Of course, without any form of magnification, you can't necessarily zoom in to identify a target or differentiate a target behind a low contrast background. So in stage two, we see where creative stage design can allow a stage to be leveraged for both three gun and two gun at the same match. So if you're in the three gun division, this stage would have you start with the shotgun, engage all the plate racks with your shotgun, abandon the shotgun, switch to the pistol, and engage the paper targets with your pistol. So here's the two gun version. By simply changing the paper targets to rifle targets and the plate rack to pistol targets, you've now used the same stage design in the same bay for two different matches, three gun and two gun respectively. Here's my run in the two-gun division. Stand by. three is the same whether you're in the two gun or three gun match in that it is rifle only. You engage two rifle plates from 50 yards in three different shooting boxes, then move, move within the fault lines and engage a bunch of close range CQB type paper from a bunch of different shooting positions. Some of the paper is kind of hidden, so the catch here is to be fluid with your movement and really not stop moving at any moment if you can. Um, obviously the what would stoner do 14.5 inch carbine with red dot is really well aligned for this stage and I think that's reflected in my stage run here. So stage four was different if you were shooting three gun versus two gun and they simply replaced the pistol with the shotgun or vice versa. So if you're in the three gun division, this was a shotgun only stage. And if you were in the two gun division, this was a pistol only stage. The advantage of the shotgun is the targets are easier to engage and neutralize because some of them were quite small. The advantage of the pistol was you generally had more capacity and therefore more rounds before a reload. So let's see how we do.
So in summary, I think this idea worked really well. And in fact, the Rio Salado match directors have already said they're gonna do this again next month and continue to do this. Personally, I think they're gonna find more and more people turning out for the two gun portion of their three gun match. And they may very well wanna have a dedicated two gun match at Rio Salado. Um, but even if they don't, this idea of embedding a two gun event within a three gun match makes complete sense. And there's really no reason to not do that. Since you're using the same rules, the same gear restrictions, the same divisions, all you do is switch the stages up slightly. And as long as you don't have a stage that requires all three guns, or you're clever with maybe the pistol replaces the shotgun element within a all three guns uh, stage, there's no reason to not embed a two gun stage or match within your three gun event. So this is another interesting strategy to spread the idea of two gun. Now, obviously it's not the same two gun that we run with two GACM. It's not as physical. We're not throwing kettlebells or crawling on the ground and that's okay. I think the reality is, is that by having different flavors of two gun, you're gonna be able to test your gear and you in many different ways. So like here in Arizona, we're blessed with the opportunity to have two GACM down near Tucson, to have AZ two gun up near Phoenix. Now we have this Rio Salado two gun event embedded within the three gun match, which has a different flavor. And each and every match director brings their own vibe and desires to the match and stage design. And by going or attending multiple different stage designs or different match events, you get a different idea of where your skill set and gear lie. So at Rio Salado, we had the opportunity to shoot at range more so. We had some little bit farther target engagements and I expect we will continue to do so. Sometimes they put targets out to 600 at that match. At Paul's match or AZ Two Gun, Paul and Mark, great friends of ours. They do a little bit more stuff that's more, it's more physical than standard three gun, not as physical as what we do down in Tucson for the most part, but they have more range in a natural environment. My match, of course, 2G ACM, we have a very large emphasis on physicality and very difficult shooting challenges. So we have a different vibe as well. By attending all three, you get a really rounded picture of how you're gear and how you're doing as a shooter. But more importantly, this is a great strategy. I would go, if you wanna see a two gun match in your area, Go talk to your three gun match director, show them this video and say, hey, look, there's a way to run two gun without interrupting your three gun event and vice versa. I think this is a winning idea. So thanks for tuning in guys. I wanna remind you that InRange TV is wholly viewer supported. We are only supported by you, the viewer. We are not taking any ad revenue from YouTube whatsoever. We demonetized ourselves. So if you consider, if you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon but we understand that not everyone can do that. If you can't, the other greatly important thing you can do for us is subscribe to our channel and share this content with your friends because we can't count on YouTube's algorithm to promote our videos. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps you get two gun in your area.